I see this kind of thing a lot. And if I'd have said to somebody, even one of my guys, unfortunately, show me how good your cheese is on, on this fella. Ba 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 ba. That had been going in, you know, and it's um, over the, the last 30 years, my, you know, my students have kind of come to realize that that's not the way. It's not about that. Anybody I see that if they need to show how good their Wing Chun is, they do it through effectively you just being a bully. See if you said to me, only ever play Chi that little bit better than the person you're with, you know, for, for a couple of reasons. One is because it kind of, um, it's not going to demoralize them by just beating them up, you know, even though you think you can. Um, and also that little bit, it just kind of encourages them. Oh, I nearly got there. I nearly got there. Unfortunately, sometimes what does happen is somebody may visit and, and I'll play that way in a courteous manner. And then they'll leave thinking, ah, that guy's not really that good. I was nearly in on, on, on him on so many occasions. And I think, oh, gosh. But that's it. You know, I'm training my Wing Chun. I'm not going to kind of change my standards um, for, for that person. I'm, I'm re representing uh, Yip Man's son. So, um, <clears throat> so that's, that's the thing. I, I played in a way where I thought Yip Chun, Brahma Yip Chun said to me, show me how good your Wing Chun is. So for that, I made sure that I had perfect positions all the time, that I was receptive, that I was aware of any opportunities, that I kept my changes tight but not tense, that when something came in, I moved the body as a whole, that I allowed myself to follow and to feel and flow. Well, I didn't do it at any point, boom, it was gone. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger said that um, when he finishes like sixth uh, Olympia, Mr. Olympia, he said uh, that he had the perfect uh, symmetry. He was in perfect proportion. He said he would never build his calves bigger because then if they were bigger, everything else would have to be bigger because everything needed to be in line. Um, I heard um, a chef, Marco Pierre White, say um, perfection is somebody doing lots of very small things very well. And that's, that's what, what I look for. It's like a, like spinning plates, I'll refer to. What we're trying to do is I'll give little pieces. I'll show you how to do the town. It can move, it can move, that's fine. But you, let's just keep it within those areas. I don't say that's got to be that. Um, I don't turn the volume right up on any technique. Everything is in balance and, and we keep this. Um, and so that's that's how it's, it's got to be in cheese out. I just did everything as it was meant to be. And, and then when he said, okay, then I just kind of, the only, uh, and I can go for it. The only thing I did then was um, instead of waiting for opportunities to, to be presented to me, I might open it a little bit, I'd press a little bit. Maybe I'll push his, his fox out a little bit. So then when he pushed back in, maybe I'd then scoop it with a cow so and hit around. So I started kind of just prizing um, openings and opportunities. So um, perfection. Um, Uh, this is this. I want to. I want to just take a moment on this because I know I've not forgotten your question. When we describe somebody, we we describe. Oh, you mean the fat man? Oh, you mean the tall man? The guy with the big ears? The man with the the red nose? We 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 describe people by imperfections, you know. And this is it. Oh, have you seen uh, such and such? Oh, her with the big bosoms and you know. Oh, with the long legs. It's always imperfections, you know. And if I said to you like to to describe somebody like Brad Pitt. Um, you might say a hair colour, um, but that can be changed, doesn't matter. Or like um, a, a young Roger Moore or, or Mel Gibson, you know, these. Um, it's very difficult because, um, like Natalie Portman, for instance, a very beautiful lady, but because nothing sticks out, nothing stands out, it's very difficult. That's, that's perfection. So um, mm -hmm. this is why I say, in my opinion, it takes effort to get Wing Chun wrong. It doesn't have to be really hard work to be very good at it. Just stop doing very bad mistakes. Take each single thing and just learn to do that shape well. And by well, I mean comfortably. And then we get a balance. Then we get the Uzi 9mm. Then we get the machine gun. And, and, and if I want to make my calves a little bit bigger, that as uh, Schwarzenegger said, then I can. And I can move everything a little bit bigger. I can turn the dial up on all of my little elements. So the power can go up, provided that when the power goes up, my ability to go back to zero remains. So now we, we having said all that, if you watch this back, this, this 
piece that I've been talking about, you'll understand. You might want to watch it a few times. On, on a wall bag, if you, if you did a powerful punch, um, the reason why I said that is because you'll probably use muscle. Ugh. I've asked you to do the punch as powerfully as you can. I haven't asked you to do the punch wrong. I haven't asked you to punch the bag incorrectly. And yet, this is the thing. Show me how good your Wing Chun is. What I did was I just did it as perfect as I could. I didn't ar, 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 go in, punch the bag as hard as you can within the realms of your ability. But what people will do is they'll hit it um, as hard as they can, which also means incorrectly. But let's say this happens because we need to find out what's incorrect before we can then make it correct. So I'm going to hit the bag 100% and I'll probably find myself lingering at 30%. You know this, I believe, but I'll, I'm going to mention it anyway. So if that's the case, then I'm lingering tension of, uh, of 30%. That means my next punch would only have 70% available. So when I do the punch again, carrying weight and, and muscle resistance from the previous technique, uh, I hit that. And I'm probably now lingering at 40%. So my next one's only going to be 60%. So the more power and strength and muscle and force I'm trying to put in is actually depleting the outcome. I'm getting worse and worse with my punches. I told you once about a snooker story when I was trying to screw the, the cue ball back and, and it wasn't moving. So I'm just hitting it harder. And now the flipping thing is going forwards instead of back. So <laughs> what do I say? Never sacrifice technique for speed or power. So then um, a, a billiard player, third in the world at that time, I was teaching him, I told you before, I was teaching him um, Sulem Tao to help him uh, concentrate in Dubai, in Dubai for, uh, for the world championship. And he, he said, lower the backhand and just gently push through. I did that, potted the ball and screwed back perfectly. So I, I just, I, I'd become fallen for my own trap. Literally sacrifice technique for the speed and power. I just hit it faster, hit it harder and, and made a bad technique. So if this is the case, what I need to do is not keep hitting less and less. If I realize on the first one, if I hit 100% and I linger at 30, <coughs> I can do a few of those. <clears throat> and then I need to realize, okay, my limit, my, where my ability to get back to zero-ish is about 70. So then what I need to focus on is not my switching on, but my switching off. So I'm going to hit 70-0, 70-0, 70-0. So as soon as I hit, it's gone. Hit, it's gone. Then when we get the technique right, we reintroduce the speed and the power. So now I up it to 75% power on the bag. And I'll probably find that I'm lingering about 5%. And I do that until I get to 75% power. It's not literally 75%. It's a number pulled out of a hat. 75, but I'm going back to zero. 75 back to zero. Then I'll go up to 80. I add a little bit more, like adding salt to a, a recipe, a little bit more seasoning, just a little bit of time. <coughs> so 80, and I'm lingering a little bit, lingering a little bit, and I keep doing that until I get to the point where I can hit with that power, but get to nothing, hit nothing, hit and nothing. And that's how we build our explosive energy, not the switching on of that power, but the ability to switch it off. And that's what gives us that explosive energy. <clears throat> now then, oh, I don't have a wall bag. So what can I do? And this is the question. You know about the wall bag, but I need to um, redress that just to, to get the understanding of what we mean by that. What I can then do, and we can do this now together, is we can play Chum Q. Or... Uh, Tao, second and third section uh, in particular. In fact, we'll do second and third section, then I can, I can see what you're doing. And what we can do with this is as we're going through it, see if you can put power on. Oh yeah, it lingers. So when I put that much power on, it lingers. So my intention is to go through the section with the, the understanding is, and I want to try and use as much power as I can, but only at the level where as soon as I use it, it's gone. So it's on, it's off. So it's very much that, like I'm going to touch an electric fence. As soon as it's on, it's off. That's the punch that we're after. That's the, 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 um, the crux of the thing. So <coughs> we'll try this together. Um, in fact, getting our stance. <coughs> Excuse me, I got tickled. 
So right fist in the left hand, knees, toes and heels. And we're just going to go straight into second section. So left hand prepared, slowly down, and I want you to put lots of power on, boom, but then see if you can use, that was good, because as soon as you use it, lose it. Right side ready, down, boom, off. Lifting up and round, bang, off. So as soon as it's used, it's gone. That's what we're after. So we're focusing on the same thing, but the off. And here, off, 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 and off. Do that one again, back to your right on top. So we're rolling in, I wanna make sure, because that looks like your hands are quite, I just saw your um, fingers very rigid there. So try and think of the elbows dropping in. That's good, yeah. But not having that kind of solid fingers. So back right on top then. And always oh, that thumb, I can see a left thumb dangling down. There you go. <laughs> so if I can see the, uh, the bottom one, the chances are the top one's draped as well. So they're both tucked in. So we roll and off. Off. So tiny punch. As soon as it's back, it's gone. The elbow is going to thrust. Boom, it's off. And down. And up. Third section then. Let's go through this as well. So as soon as we use it, we lose it. Left side. Off. Off. That's it. Carry on with this while I talk. But do try to put the power in. So we want to see at what point are you using power? And then you think, yes, it's kind of lingering there. So we want to try and get rid of that. But what we don't want to do is only play the form safe so I can put a little tweak on and there's nothing after it. Because you can also tell yourself, well, if I do put a little tweak on, I switched it off immediately after. Yay, for me, that's great. Mm. But is that tweak that you used enough? So we still want to think, bang, the punch is coming in, block and off, block and off, block and off. So as soon as it's used, so we need more speed and more power in that. But the focus, the thought on this is going to be, you're switching off. Great. So a genuine punch is coming in, a solid punch, bah, block, and it's off. And it's off. And it's off. As soon as you use it, lose it. So bounce the punch away. And again. And again. Level lift. Cool. Off. 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 And that's the way of training this. Initially we build it, then we learn how to apply it. But application isn't just switching it on, we're switching it off. So that's the, uh, it's very easy for us to just think, well, you know, as soon as we've seen the, it's like preparing for a party. We all want to prepare for the party. We all want to enjoy the party. Nobody wants to clear up after the party. So left hand across, boom, that's it. So that's the tidying up after. As soon as it's on, it's off. And one, two, Excellent. And usually when I train that kind of thing, at that point when I, I put the three punches on the box, boom, boom, You 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 answered you answered my question even before I, I asked it. I was gonna ask you if you can feel the linger, and I absolutely do. I can feel the linger um, all the way up, like back to the source. Is that accurate? Yep, that's, I, I can, that's I right. can feel that linger. It's, but it, it, <clears throat> you remember the soda bottle when I talked about throwing forwards and the slosh. So the yes. half soda bottle goes to that and it sloshes to the end. That's great. But what I want you to think of is, uh, if anyone's not read the blog, I don't know what it's called. Soda punches might have been. Um, a half filled soda bottle. If I chuck it to one end and then stop, the fluid would slush forward. So I punch and it slushes forward. But as for the switching off, not going back to the source, but as soon as it's there, boom, just severed at the source. So as soon as it's gone out and it slushes to the front, sever it. So it's gone. Try to see if you can, because 
what's it's the, what you're feeling at the moment is when it's gone out, you can feel it still there. You can feel the linger. Now you know what is there and how it got there. You're then retracing your steps on how to drain that out again. Ultimately, we're going to get to a point where it will go out and then it's all just gone. So try and think of it almost as soon as you punch here. I'll, I'll kind of visualize this. You, you, you will have noticed throughout this, every time I sit about relaxing, I hit, I sort of dropped in my stance, this kind of thing. We're not dropping in the stance. Nothing's changing. It was just to, to kind of give a little bit of theatrical uh, prowess to it, um, the, the switch off. But the action of that is actually not too far from the truth. If we think of hitting and then it just cutting. So perhaps just do a few of these punches. And what I want you to do is, when you, when you punch, you're gonna punch, but then let your shoulder just drop. So punch and then drop your shoulder. So hit and then drop your shoulder. So you're gonna, there's very much a linger there. Don't put so much power on the first few. So just hit, because I want you to feel like it's, like it's cutting off from the base of the arm, from the shoulder. It's, it's not, you know, I, we, we had this a couple of weeks ago and I said, uh, um, not we, like we haven't, I can't remember what the lesson was, you will. Um, that it, I, it wasn't, the technique hasn't changed, the action hasn't changed, but when we change the thinking behind it, we get this different reaction. Do you remember what it was? I can't remember what the, what the thing was. But, um, it will come to me, I, yeah. my mind is... Yeah. But that's, that's okay. Um, but yeah, so you're quite right. You can feel the linger is the most, the first important thing, the most important thing. So now we know what, what it is that we're trying to lose. Um, in the, but in the same way as we can do that with hitting the bag, we can do that even without bag. We don't need a person. You know, we, we don't need, this is solo training for Wing Chun. You know, it's a massive thing. Because if you're in a um, partner room with someone and doing techniques, rarely would you be given an opportunity to feel that off. Yeah, go ahead. So, so I just almost want you to say again exactly what you said. So when I punch, when I feel that linger, it's just like it's just like the soda bottle, just like the pot. I feel it go down and I feel it come back. And you're saying that once it's out, you can cut it off from the source and it's just gone. Yeah. And again, this is this is only um, a visualization for you. I, I want you to think of this. I want you to think of like if we if we just punch initially, um, just you know, as simple as. No one knows what we're talking about. First time somebody walks in, okay, I'd like you to punch. What they're going to do is they're going to throw their body. They're going to be tense. <clears throat> okay, we get the action. Then we think, well, let's not move anything that doesn't need to move. And we're going to think of driving from the elbow. Um, try not to be so tense. We'll then start getting rid of the muscle. So we've, we've, uh, we've seen a rubbish punch, first stage. Then we've moved on to minimizing excess movement, the second, another stage. Um, keep relaxed. Then we'll get that more refined and we'll say about tense on impact. Then we'll start to um, visualize this a little bit further where we've now got to a point where what you're visualizing is that soda bottle swishing to the end. So we can visualize a chain reaction moving down the arm. However, at this point, this is now where we are getting to our final, our full stop. You have completely understood and acknowledged the chain reaction moving down your arm um, through the visualization of the, the soda bottle slush into the end. Now, at that point, we then need to stop. However, at this stage for you in particular, you've referred to the, the uh, understanding of the chain reaction going forward. So therefore, to relax, you're reversing that chain reaction or, or how you worded it was about feeling the energy or the power moving up and then coming back down. I want you to, to be more severe with this to the point that as soon as you feel it get to the end and it applies it's done its job so don't even bring it back just see if you can switch off so mm, okay maybe we can do this with another visual so this is what i want you to do watch how i punch with my right hand as soon as i punch and i feel it tense let the sh shoulder drop like the whole almost literally like it's just been cut at the uh, at that at that part of your arm so as soon as you punch, have you frozen there? I'm not seeing you moving. You may have frozen. We may have locked up. 
but I'll show you this anyway, just for a couple of, see if you can see this. So as I punch, I'm going to hit and relax, hit and relax. I'm always going to just let my upper arm just drop in, hit and drop, only to try to help me imagine that that cutoff point is way up here. So not even to try and think of anything coming back. Um, is it going to do that? Possibly. Does it do that anatomically? Yeah, maybe. Um, but visually, I want us to try and get away from that and just think of the explosive and gone, explosive and gone. Uh, cool. I hope you got something from that. 